Try and find any evidence of the past without thought. Try as hard as you can to find any past apart from the current thought of it. Try as hard as you can. That's a quote from Peter Zubin in his book, Consciousness is All. Welcome to Letting Go and the Greatest Secret, where we explore the end of your suffering and the beginning of lasting happiness. I'm Hale Dwoskin, and today we'll be talking to Peter Zubin, who is a featured teacher along with me in Rhonda Byrne's book, The Greatest Secret. Peter Zubin writes, teaches, and coaches on spirituality and consciousness. He is the author of Consciousness is All and Simply Notice, Queer Awareness is the Key to Happiness, Love, and Freedom. I'd like you to just see what comes up as a response to this question. What is awareness? It is a... Knowing and alive, alert, knowing, cognizance of being, of being present, of being alive, which itself is sort of self-evident, self-obvious without thought, without a thought process. It's maybe not immediately evident, but on contemplation, meditation, it is literally all that exists. It is the only, there's only one of it. It's the only exister, the only life, the only presence, the only substance, the source. And, you know, we could go on and on with the synonyms. Yes, we could. But... We could. That's great. And... In your experience, through your working with people, uh, what's a, how would you introduce people to that? I mean, obviously, that's something that's um, right here, right now, but we often miss it. So how would you introduce us to that? It, it would depend on whether the one that, that I was you know, talking with, working with, there would be some sense of whether or not they're new to this or if they're fairly seasoned. And if, to speak it, about that. if it was someone new, I would say, first of all, don't take my word for any of this, but check it within yourself to see if it rings true. And from there say, all right, now let's hear you. You're here. We're having a conversation. Now let's take inventory of everything that's here in this setting. What have you got? And you might start with the sensory stuff because that's the most obvious. Sure. Like, well, there's, I'm aware of colors and shapes and forms that I see visually, optically. I, what else? Oh, there's sounds. There's the sound of a voice talking right now and perhaps outdoor sounds, extraneous or in a room, if there's an air conditioner, it's that kind of thing. There are sensations or feelings that have to do with the body. Let's say a, a tactile feeling of legs and a back against a sofa and the bottoms of feet on a floor and maybe temperature, air temperature in a room and inner body type feelings. There's a whole big package there. You can talk a lot about that. <laughs> then to keep you busy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sometimes in ways you'd rather not be kept. Busy. Oh, definitely. <laughs> you know? And uh, did I do sounds? I think I did. No, I didn't. But anyway, sounds, then we could go internally again, uh, also tastes and smells. Okay, those are the five sort of physical phenomena, we, we might say. Then there's this stuff called thinking. 
which I do, like, oh, I'm feeling on overload with information right now, or, oh, this is new, or just all kinds of thoughts happening. And you notice that the thoughts come and go constantly. They're always changing. And hand in hand with the thinking are, is emotions, feelings, and those are different type of feelings, not tactile, physical feelings, but feelings in, in well, emotions, energy, uh, and we, you know, categorize them happy, bored, sad, frustrated, uh, curious. I don't know if that's an emotion or not, but, uh, you know, th there's a whole spectrum of yeah, them. Yeah, you could go on forever. All, all that, in different for sure. colors. Yes. And then, okay, that's, those are the basic ones. On a more subtle level, there's we could say energy, and that's a whole other thing too, which is not so obvious. I, in, in the book, Simply Notice, I refer to thoughts as like mental billboards. That's what, because you sometimes, some of us think in words, some of think in images, but it's as if there's some, something comes up and you're aware of it mentally, some type of form. And when you get more subtle down to energy, like oh, I feel a sense of heavy atmosphere in this room today because people are sad about this or that, or the, the air is very agitated kind of thing. Um, those aren't so obvious, but those, those are there too. And the, by the way, the more you refine your inventory taking, the more stuff you find. But then the most important part after all of this is well, there's something that notices all this stuff or is aware of it or witnesses it, all those terms that we use. And it is what can tell the difference between, oh my gosh, sorry about that. That's no, okay. It's just a sound. <laughs> Should have turned it off. That's right. There's another sound. There we go. Uh, where were we? Uh, witnessing, and, witnessing, yes, and the awareness and behind all the phenomena. That's right. That that itself is not any type of phenomena, exactly. but which experiences or knows or witnesses, and it's that which can tell one type of phenomena from another, and isn't in any of it. It's you know, as they say, there's the content, and then there's the container, so to speak, and it's as if awareness, but which is itself is not any of the content, and so that's. That's what awareness is. And awareness in, well, it happens to be in, in so many ways, the, I don't know if opposite is the best term, but I was going to say from all the forms that we seem to be aware of, awareness itself has no form. Mm -hmm. It has no shape. It has no color. It has no, it's not thinkable. It uh, has no time duration to it. And, uh, you know, on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So does that answer? Well, that you, you uh, as I recall, you said that for someone who's new, you might describe it like this. Now also tell me if someone's, there'll be people, there, there are people who, uh, uh, um, some of us have been doing this a long time. We've gone mm -hmm. to a lot of teachers, we've gone to seminars, we've been to the conferences. And so we've heard things like this before. How would you speak to us? It may not be any different. <laughs> yeah, but, but you said there were two ways. Be, so it wouldn't be so basic, but uh... What's, what seems to be a recurring theme in my, the, the things that I do and talk about is the, while it's not thinkable, not reducible to any kind of a knowable anything, yet it can be said that awareness is infallibly ever present. It can only be present. It cannot be past or future. And um, I'll get into, too, by the way, right here. This is a good 
good spot. Good. One of the things that I wanted to bring up at the beginning of our, of our podcast, uh, which is this, we tend to, if I were to say where, and, and by the way, I'm going to speak as if all of those who will be listening to this podcast in, in the time and space realm, eventually, as if they're all here now, doesn't matter what level one seems to be on. We're talking about two different types of levels right now, but the, the speaking is going to be as if all are present right now, because there's no time in pure consciousness. So it doesn't matter when this is heard. It's, it's ever presently alive, that which is here. And, um, so we'll do that. Now, if I were to ask, here's a, here's a discussion, a podcast. Now, to the listeners, from where are you participating in this podcast? You're participating as a listener, so to speak. And, and we can get into the broader thing, too, which is who really, there's only one participant here, really. But let's start with the first part of it. From where? And frankly, the tendency, and it's totally natural, is most of us tend to think in terms of the body. And the body is always geographically located somewhere. Uh, this body is in Arizona, that one's in Washington, and the listener bodies could be throughout the United States, in other continents for sure, and, and so on. Okay, that's one way of looking at it. But now, We've been talking about awareness. Here, awareness is, obviously, one is aware. There'd be no knowing that this conversation is even happening. Now, the, what about the presence of this awareness? Without thinking, just letting awareness be awareness, without analyzing it mentally, is it not absolutely certain that awareness is present to awareness don't ask your thinking mind this just let awareness itself answer without thought yes yes it, it is an it is. absolute certainty yeah there's no, there's no way to doubt that. <laughs> irrefutable yeah. right and so the one who and by the way no this is huge too no pardon me no one person knows how to make awareness be aware. I don't know how to do that. Hale doesn't know how to do that. No. Yet here it is, functioning magnificently, effortlessly, and certainly, definitely. And I like to say ungoawayably. It ungoawayably. Yeah. It cannot <laughs> it cannot not be, right? Right. Yes. Okay. So, and by the way, because it's really awareness or consciousness that is the one being conscious here. Let's be honest. I don't know how to do that, but here it is. It's functioning. It's life. We can call it life with the capital L or self source, all those terms, but it is being itself certainty. And so the listening is being done by this certainty from a place of certainty. And as long as one is talking, if and by the way, the talk can only happen coming out of this apparent body here, thanks to that certainty being present. And all that's really happening is when the, the speaking is done in the clarity that it's awareness or consciousness, the self, another, another term, it's just a word, but it's certainty that is doing the talking. And it's only talking about itself because it's all there is. And it is, it's a definite, you know, irrefutable fact of being. It doesn't belong to anybody. It's, it's, you know, universal, impersonal, but it's dependable, so to speak. Very. You know yeah. what I mean. There's nothing more dependable than that. Exactly. Yeah. And <laughs> as you let that sort of filter into, and I'm speaking to everyone now, not you, Hale, of course. No, uh, no, of course. Uh, into your let that certainty thing sort of sink in and you know become more and more in the foreground of awareness it's like oh my gosh this is magnificent what this is and with absolutely no effort 
no personal effort. In fact, the less personal effort, the better, mm. the cleaner. Yes, and the easier. Isn't and it? easier, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah in fact, to make a, effort, yeah, oh, again. I was just gonna say, to put personal effort to try and superimpose it on top of what this already is, is actually creating resistance. <laughs> it it's does. adding resistance, it's adding drag. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's though all efforting to be is a denial of that which you already are. Yeah, beautiful. Aren't you smart, consciousness? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, what we're, you know, we're having, the two of us at the moment are having a conversation, but I, wouldn't you agree that everyone listening to this, if they really, once they really start paying attention, could actually have the same conversation, either with themselves or other people interested oh, in yeah. this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's the same in all of us. Absolutely, it? yeah. In, in fact, uh sometimes we talk about this too, is always before talking, it's not easy and we slip up all the time and you never blame yourself for that. But if there can be a remembrance and there really isn't even anybody has to remember, but it, it sort of starts to become automatic is if when talking between two bodies, you know, people say, oh, I, I, I'm so in it when I stay at home and I'm quiet, but then when I have to go out in the everyday world or I have to go to the workplace, that's when I lose it. And a, a wonderful way to stay as it, which, and you really can't ever not be it, like we were saying earlier, it's ungoawayable without any thought required. You can't, it's an inescapable, it's choiceless, as they say, but uh, is to always, before opening the mouth, Try to let there be that inner clarity, which is instantaneous. Ah, all the only one talking here really is awareness. And it's just all there is is itself. So there appears to be another body there. What appears to my senses to be another self, but actually same one. And it's really orchestrating the whole thing. Yes. Really? Yes. And it's just as much there as it is here. Yes. As they say, everywhere present. Everywhere present. Yes. So one of the things that I've heard you say, which I really like, um, you talk about the, how, what we are, uh, another way to, for us to really see that, I, I would think, is to explore something that you talk about, which is how that which we are <clears throat> never really moves. Oh yeah. So if you could, uh, I saw you do this and I really like it. The more experiential we can make this, the better. So can you talk about that and demonstrate it sure. so that people can get a sense of that? Sure, yeah, it's, it's a useful thing. It's not uh, what we wanna be alert to and I'm not implying that you were implying this uh, at all. I, it's like a reminder to myself, so to speak, is that we want to keep clear that it's really this even can be done thanks to the presence of awareness and not a personal me doing something that's going to keep me better glued to being awareness. Just drop that guy altogether. <laughs> let that go and notice how beautifully awareness can't go away. It, right. it can't not be. But what you're referring to, I think, is... Uh, Everything in the phenomenal world, as we said earlier in our sort of inventory there, sights, sounds, feelings, thoughts, emotions, even tastes and smells, all phenomena, because it's really basically energy, pardon me, is always moving always moving and changing that's its nature that doesn't make it bad or anything but that's just its nature it's always moving and in a lot of ways what what we tend to identify most with is the visible because that seems to be the strongest of the senses that's sometimes feeling is is more more so but uh the visual usually is the strongest one and everything in the visual 
that which we perceive visually is moving usually unless the body's sitting still okay but you can look out the window and see the tree blowing in the wind or the clouds moving and when the body gets up and starts to move around the room or wherever it's going to go during the day there's constant movement and it's in relation of the body to other things and we tend to go right with that and it's very hypnotic in terms of movement now Let's come back to awareness, which is aware of all the phenomena, including the body as a whole. The body is, is itself is not aware. It's, it's a thing awareness appears to be aware of too. But anyone who's listening, have you ever seen awareness or consciousness or spirit or being visually? No. I haven't. <laughs> no. You can't, that's, you know, it's, that's not its nature. It has no form, like we were saying right. earlier. It's infinite, and infinite means nothing finite, no, and all, all form is finite. So there's no, no finite form there. And if you will now sort of check in as your, put, be alive as your beingness, this, this, as we were saying, this certainty of presentness. It can't be past, it can't be future. Here it is. And it's invisible, but it's alive. It's alive. It's gently alive. Sometimes it's really intensely alive. And then it's even if we want to talk about fine points, it's even something that seems to be aware on a deeper level, even of the aliveness in one sense, you know, on a more subtle level. But we don't need to get into that too deeply at the moment, but this aliveness, we can call it presence. It's all, it's always present tense. A lot the aliving feel the aliving you are. And you're doing this sort of with your soul sense, not any of your body sense. It's not limited to being inside the body, but it's gently alive. And it's ever present, always. And it seems attention might wander from it, but then you come back to it, and then you even drop trying to keep attention on it, and there's you just sort of melt into this aliveness. And here it is, and it's not moving. And it's invisible. That's the key. It's invisible, but very real. That's why I was talking about the aliveness. Very real and tangible as presence to itself. And by the way, this aliveness isn't alive to another. It's aliveness itself that is experiencing this aliveness, which is life itself, which is the self, or is the is source or being, whatever term we want to use. So here it is invisibly, and it's not moving, but it's aliving in place, so to speak. And now, just to make a distinction, Take a hand and move it back and forth in front of the face. Okay, now attention might want to go to the hand because that's where the moon, that's what attention has been sort of conditioned to do, but not now. You're staying as aliveness. You're just resting. You don't have to do anything. It can't not be. Just feel the can't not be-ness of it, can't go away-ness of aliveness while the hand is moving. And it's really, again, it's that certainty of being ever in place as ever present, as you said earlier, Hale, ever present. And it's like an anchor, if you will. That's a bad word in a way. It's it's a formless anchor and it's not anchored to anything. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, yes, and there's, it's the, it's the anchor of not having to hold on to anything. Anchor of unattachedness, if you want to call it that, whatever that is. I don't know, but <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> uh, okay. And allness. It, it's, ah, allness. we didn't talk, we yeah. didn't talk too much about the allness of consciousness, but it, there's absolutely nothing that can exist outside of or beyond or separate from consciousness or awareness this right. invisibility this this you can't find a border to it that's a whole other podcast right there but uh well you know for for many that's going to be you know sort of old news too but uh it's it, so to um 
go a little bit further, another, it's just a word, but a beautiful thing about this ever-present aliveness is it's a oneness. It's just oneness and it's a peace. It's a calm because it, it, nothing ever changes here, but it's not stagnant. It's not deadness. It's ever fresh. That's another thing about it. It's ever fresh. It never gets stale because it's new every moment, every moment, every moment, every moment. There's no oldness here. It doesn't apply. So, and as this is all the presence there is that includes the entire universe, this invisible everywhereness, yet which is alive, it's also love. And if we, you know, it seems like maybe that's a little bit different frequency, kind of on a very subtle level, but it is love. It's the one, it's the unconditional love because it's present no matter what appears to happen in the realm of phenomena. It never judges. It can't. It's just unconditional. It's a warmth. But now here's the incredible thing. As this, which you don't have to, you have no personal responsibility for upholding this or maintaining it or sustaining it. That's life's job and it's perfect at it. It can't mess up. And maybe it seems we can wander away from it with attention and get pulled into the phenomenal realm. Uh, but okay, so you just drop that, come back. Oh, you're, I already am back. In fact, I never left. Oh, isn't that nice? But now, when one is, let's say, identified here, but it's not a me identifying as the ever-present love, it's the ever-present love being ever-present love. And the so-called secondary me has kind of just evaporated. This stuff is already everywhere, everywhere permanently. And no matter where the body is going to go forever, not just this afternoon, not just tomorrow, not just for all of next week, for the next year, forever. The body only can appear to move around in this ever-present, certain, infallible, gentle love. I love that. Infallible, Isn't that what a what a love. what a <laughs> what a fantastic thing to quote unquote look forward to in the now? Is that my gosh, my body, which isn't even me. It's my, you know, it's my thing to use. Some, I, this funny thought, I don't know, it just comes to thought you said be free. So here we go. In, in writing about this a while back, this thought came right out of the blue. Have you ever thought the body is yours to use as a way? It's, it really belongs to awareness, to self. Right. It's not, there's no middleman you in between their personal self that the body really belongs to. It belongs to life, really. And that is such, maybe at first the ego doesn't want to, I don't know if I want to go all the way with that one. But <laughs> the more you do, it's, it's so wonderful to let that in. Just all the all the sense of responsibility falls away. It's a relief. And the isn't it? the weight. It's a relief. Yeah, but um, darn it, that's what happens. You get so full, the line of thought goes, because this is not linear. You know what I mean? No. I, I was thinking of something. What were we oh, talking you were, about? You were go you were going, and I love when that happens. You know, uh, when I talk, sometimes I totally lose my train of thought, so I just stop. And I, the train either comes back or the train <laughs> shows up. <laughs> There's no rush. Yeah, yeah right. There's no time. Not anyway. going anywhere. Right. Where are you going? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I tell you, that's the thing. This this uh, point we were on just before about the everywhere. The thing is, as presence, you already as presence now, impersonal presence, universal presence, divine presence. This you, the real you, which is itself are already divinely in place before the body ever goes there. Hmm. And that's all it's ever going to be walking through is heaven, through divinity, wherever it's going to go, when there is the awareness that this is the living fact of life. Hmm. You know, when, when there's ignorance of it, it doesn't seem to operate for us, but it's when there's an awareness of it, it's like, oh my gosh, isn't this wonderful? 
So uh, that's still not where. You, you, what, you what, said what, it was something that you wrote down a while ago. Oh yes, thank you, thank you. There, there you, you go. go. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> yeah. So the body, the body moves around in you as awareness, not as a personal yes. self. And you don't move around in the body. The body is in you. And so this this is what that what came is like, okay, the body's not you. All right. Have you ever thought of the body as, well, a pet? Hmm. And I was kind of taken aback by that, you know, <laughs> because it was so unusual. But it's like, you know, that's not that far off in right, a way. Right. And then a whole other thing came is, have you ever thought of body? If you, so we have all these names, synonyms, and they're just words for self, consciousness, awareness. Sometimes, this is a fun one, the divine artist. Mm. And it's just painting this experience, even speaking relatively of the phenomenal world. But, you know, in the, in the clarity, by the way, we forgot to talk about this too, this certain pure ever-present love is also the only perceiver hmm. of your world or experience. It's divinity that is doing all the perceiving of that goes on in life, really. And it's flawless. It knows no past. It's absolutely guiltless. It, it's, it's crystal clear, clean, pristine, never messed up, never, no guilt, no, you know, no, not muddied by any kind of emotional stuff or anything. Like that. It's just this pristine beauty is, is the only perceiver of, of all experience. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't need a bit of help from Peter. <laughs> or any yeah. of us or any of us. Yeah. we only think we're helping <laughs> yes sometimes right. when we think we're helping though experientially it feels like we're our help is to put our finger in the gear as opposed to get keep um yeah actually this is not a doing this but <clears throat> the more you are aware of that which you are doesn't it feel like well obviously you're not the doer but it feels like the life just takes care of itself yes Yes, because from, from the infinite perspective, from the divine perspective, we're not speaking in terms of the phenomena now. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with phenomena. I don't mean it that way, but that's not where you want to be your starting point. You're, if, that, if you're starting with phenomena, you're not starting with yourself. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the only reason we make that distinction. But sure. uh, from, from that divine perspective, all is, is per eternally, perfect yes and yes. changeless so yeah it's like yeah i want that perceiving my world instead of conditioned peter <laughs> thinking you know so absolutely <laughs> yeah this is one that it's a little different i think i think it'll it'll give a new perspective on something that's very important to us in our everyday life and you know Great. this if this stuff isn't practical what good is it right. right you know ultimately it should be and uh this i think is, is makes it very practical and it has to do with news yeah go for it <laughs> and is that not a very timely subject so to speak yes. wouldn't yes, you say very. okay now uh and it's beautiful that we've had this sort of run up to where we are right now and the answer will be i think quite obvious given everything that's been talked about so far brought up and more importantly not the words but let's just stop for a moment ah we've got certainty we've got ever presence we've got omnipresence it's alive it's effortless it's love, it's ease, and it's ever fresh. Don't want to leave out that sparkly delight yeah. factor too, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> it, you know, it's playful. Why not? It doesn't. It, it has no baggage from yes. the past. Yeah. Okay, so this is the only. We're we're, we're as you said earlier, um, 
reason from or look out from source or self or God or the divine or the infinite or beingness. This is where this is where we're seeing from or as. And really, this isn't something that a Peter personality thinks, oh, that's a nifty new way of looking at things. Only self itself could come up with that. Mm -hmm. Really, because it's the only one conscious. It's the only one existing. It's all the life there is. So in this light, who then or what is the only for real news maker? If it's all there is, there's no other, right? no one other existing. So right away, something's going, whoa, wait a minute. Then what kind of news are you talking about? <laughs> because that's <laughs> not the, the news, news that you're I talking see. about. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's not the news I see on TV, yeah. you know, and so on. But right, Does, doesn't that ring true? Oh, Let's totally. Get that. Totally. It's undeniable. Yeah. Again. Okay. So let's firm a moment talk about news from the divine perspective. Oh, please go this, ahead and do This that. is where it's a little weird, but it's only because <laughs> we've fun. been conditioned to accept news from the other perspective, yes. from, the, from the backwards perspective, frankly. But news never changes. It's changeless. News never has a form. That's another crazy one. Mm -hmm. but it's all there is news it's it's but it's never there's no fake news here it's all real meaning that which really is it literally is all that is all that is genuinely being is this self's ever present is self's self-awareness as certainty of love of beingness of aliveness of unlimitation by the way this is this aliveness this this loving aliveness is total coverage of all that is its entirety its totality and its own being is literally all the news there ever is going on really but Again, I said it never changes, which is true, but it's always freshly alive. Just right now, don't take my word for it. Anybody listening? Is the aliveness that's now alive, can it be said to be stale or like yesterday's aliveness? <laughs> you know? No. There it is. It's like this ever gushing fountain coming right. from nowhere and going nowhere. And it's actually, you know, all there is, and that implies time too, a little bit. But Okay, so this is the only news there is. And again, this is what is perceiving. This is, you know, it might so far sound like, well, this is a little abstract, or this is reaching a little bit, but here comes the practical part. This is what is, again, still perceiving one's entire world and universe. This unchanging, fresh clarity, purity of untainted awareness, divinity. There's no conditioning here. There's no judgment. There's no prior opinions. By the way, awareness right now, let it be self-evident. Here it is. Starting right here as this, what awareness is as itself, to it, there's only now. This, this does not know a past. It knows no past, no history. What has to happen is a thought has to come in and try to superimpose itself on top of this and suggest that there was a past. But to this, no. And this is the only one existing and being alive. So that's where the, that's where the purity and the pristineness, it hasn't been before. Even the thought... Well, awareness was aware yesterday. Who's saying that? <laughs> is awareness saying that? Or is that that's a, just a thought yeah. coming up? And awareness is, is prior to that thought. So there's no, there's no such thing as before, really. Might sound a little shocking, but again, feel how stable this is mm. in another sense. Yes. Okay. So now 
This again is the only kind of news. Now let's talk about the, the pseudo news or the fake news or the news that has a form. First, the obvious stuff, you hear it on, the, uh, on TV constantly. You hear it, uh, you get news by way of the internet, newspapers, that, and that's you know what we, in the general typical definition of news, but you can go a little broader and say, oh my gosh, Every thought that arises is a form of news. Every sensation, every perception is a type of news. But that's not where the power is. That's not where the juice is. A better, better, better term here is power. Those all, there's no power in the phenomena itself. All power resides in the self, in its beingness. And you got to know that because so, you know you are that, but it, it, that's where it makes all the difference. And so what typically happens is when there isn't this alertness and you gotta, you gotta really, especially these days, you gotta be alert. I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It's not <laughs> yes. easy to do, you know, to catch yourself. But um, anyway, let's say a newscast gets turned on TV, especially lately. And my gosh, the, the, the and, and, Things like TV, they're very magnetic. And you see, the, you see the motion and the sound of the newscasters is moving too. And the sound of the people on the screen going crazy or whatever it might be. And they be. keep it fast to keep, they keep, keep it fast. the mind entertained. And there goes that <laughs> hypnotism out of right, your right, beingness right. into getting sucked into the movement. Again, instead of that invisible rest right. and unbudgingness. But if one gets drawn into that, and, and when it happens, it's going to happen. You can't beat yourself up. Just catch it and go, oh, wait a minute. Just drop, drop, let it go. Let, letting go, letting go. Um, but if one gets drawn into that, you then have invited that into your consciousness, into your, if you want to say, vibration, if you will. And now the perceiving is no longer pure. Now it's been tainted with this superimposed vibration of discord or in harmony your nature is pure harmony no agenda you don't you're perfect as you are and you let experience unfold but you're not in the unfolding you're the changeless perfection as self self is that as the only one as the only you and uh if you know but if one allows or gets caught up in all this other stuff then that has entered the mix and now the perceiving is being filtered through that vibration of discord and think of what happens when that's going on on a large scale seemingly in our world of millions seemingly on one level on another level it doesn't even matter really but you know we do seem to live in this world still and uh it just keeps, as they say, fanning the flame, stirring up the soup of, of discord. And mm -hmm. this is the way out. And you don't have to do anything. In fact, you don't want to. You don't want to try to change the apparent news because it's not real. It's an illusion. It's, you know, as Rhonda brought out so well in her, uh, in The Greatest Secret, the, the emphasis on dream. And making that distinction that you're not the dream, you're not the suffering. You know, it all appears to be going on in this impersonal, illusory sense of separateness. Mm -hmm. And boy, you know, news is one thing that will try and make a sense of separateness real fast. Yes. So, um, isn't one of the things we can do too is if the way we know that we're being pulled by whatever we're perceiving is is we can actually feel the body mind shut down a little oh yeah and constrict and constrict yes. yeah so it, it, wouldn't it be helpful to just pay attention if when that happens no it's just an invitation right to just sit back right and enjoy right. the show as opposed right. to jump in yes yeah yeah just sort of uh, you know no judgment either right. it's you know that's uh i'm glad you brought that up because that brings up another important point is we don't want to by doing this create an attitude of oh out there in the phenomena and the news junk 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 because 
then you've you've got maybe you're not getting caught up in that kind of discord but just carrying around the feeling of i coexist with junk right it's over there <laughs> but you don't want that either you know that's no, a judgment it's another illusion that's right you another, just want to, you uh, let that go too yeah and just come back to unattached unattached and the, that's the beauty of though the self is that it is perfect inherently yeah. naturally perfect that's complete right. whole without need of any phenomena they can't add anything to the self yes no yes. no amount of phenomena can add a thing to the perfection that the self is so you don't need that stuff yes absolutely so um we could go on longer, but I think we should start wrapping it up. Oh, so, absolutely. Um, thanks. Uh, thanks for that little extra. And, and that basically covered it quite well, good. you know, for, for what we could do. Okay. So um, uh, let me just ask, is there any last kernel that you want to leave people to ponder? And it, it could be just a sentence or two. It doesn't have to be something long, just something, a kernel that you would like to leave people with. If something would, comes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let, a, let awareness answer this. Don't answer it with a thought. I don't mean you personally, everybody. Doesn't awareness honor and value itself alone, completely, entirely? Doesn't it value itself completely above all else? And I don't mean that in a type of looking down your nose at otherness. I don't mean it in that way at all, but if awareness and it is all that, all that exists and it is, then it's got to be all that is of value. There's mm -hmm. nothing else. Mm -hmm. So check in with that feeling. What am I valuing here when there's a, you know, a presentation of the senses of this thing going out that wants to pull you out. Like you were saying just earlier, say, wait, where's the value here? And do I, do I not honor the awareness I am? Not that you're doing that as a separate self, but doesn't awareness honor itself completely? And that's you. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Peter Zubin. You can learn more and listen to free recordings by visiting his website, consciousnessisall.com. That's consciousnessisall.com. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe so you have immediate access to future episodes. Please give us a five-star rating and share it with the people you care about. If you'd like to learn more about my work, my mentor Lester Levinson's work, and the Sedona Method, please visit Sedona.com. As you explore our site, you'll learn the key to lasting happiness, success, peace, and emotional well-being. We have books, courses, events, and plenty of free material to explore. Again, go to Sedona.com. That's S-E-D-O-N-A.com. Thank you for being here, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Letting Go and the greatest secret.